There you go. A little bit magical, innit? Did I take it from ChatGPT? Absolutely, I did. I'm very, very, very f***ing happy about that. Well, we have basic ass trigonometry. Don't mind the drill. F***ed up some measurements and I needed to widen some holes. F*** yeah. Size and this should be there. Like, this is not A cos, this is A sine. It was A, 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 two. Look at it. F***ing works. Don't at me. Don't take my word for granted. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome to this part 5 of me working on a 2D Axis of Freedom pen plotter robot. I really need to find a better name, this is getting way too long, maybe boring for like the first few seconds. I would like to try to do as many things as possible from scratch, 3D printing a bunch of parts, maybe doing a PCB design, learning a bunch of things along the way, and make one video every week showing you the progress. And this is what happened during week number 5. So first of all, during this week, my last two videos are getting some traction. And it is pretty nice to see, again like a big part of these videos is just to keep me accountable for creating this type of content and continuing to learn stuff essentially but it is pretty nice to see new people arrive interact with the content and also giving me tips along the way i saw that the gigantic majority of you are not subscribed to this channel and just like pop into this video series so if you like it don't hesitate to subscribe all right let's jump into it First of all, mechanical engineering. What is new? For the moment, I showed it to you recently. What we have right now is only what we can call like the chassis of the robot with the end defector right there. But for it to be a pen plotter, we need to hold pens and being able to tell the robot to put the pen down and off the paper, on and off the paper. Damn. So to do that, we need to start somewhere, right? So since we are still at the prototyping phase and maybe we will never get out of that, I have to play with what I have on hand. Any maker on this planet knows what this is. This is a good old classic Nangrams micro servo motor. And I think this can be plenty of power to just lift a pen on and off paper. So obviously I don't want to reinvent the wheel. This is not the goal of this video series. So I looked into many different pre-existing designs and I think this is what we are gonna do. So I have a few more sketches. This was the only picture that I had on hand right now. But yeah, essentially you have a pen with a collet around it and the servo is just going to push that up and down, maybe with an elastic so that we have constant pressure on the paper. So it's gonna be pretty basic stuff, but at least now from what is new, we have an approximate idea of how this is gonna go. And so apart from getting an idea, this is not the only thing that I have done. Um, yesterday, I very quickly started to model the actual servo motor itself so that we can create the design around it. This is something I usually don't do when I model for mechanical parts, like is modeling what I already have on hand, for example, here, the servo. But I read that it is like a pretty good thing to actually do that because like you can actually, instead of always going back and measure around with calipers, you have your model right there and you know it's accurate to be able to create stuff around it. So for the mechanical design slash engineering parts, that is it. Where we've made the most progress though is software wise. So we talked about this last week, right? We have the firmware, what actually lives on the board, and we would have a secondary code base that would actually control what the robot is doing, just sending data to the board itself, as that board to do this or that movement. And that's all what the SP32 would do, is just listening for data and ask the robot to move to this or that position. Right? A problem we do have with the ESP32 or any Arduino board in general is that we don't have unlimited code memory. For example, let's say we would like to draw a circle, right? According to how your code is written, a circle is just made of a lot of tiny little points. And so these tiny X and Y coordinates are going to represent like a good amount of text according to the resolution of that circle, right? The problem with that is we can run out of actual code space on the ESP32. And we talked about that last week. I had this potential idea of actually having all of the pen logic on one part of my code base that would actually live on a PC and send those instructions, those X and Y instruction, maybe Z when we're going to have the actual pen, just send those lines one by one. And for each line, wait for the ESP to get it, execute it, and send back information of like, hey, we are done, give me the next line. So we agree that that was the idea of how we could do it. After a lot of finicking around, I implemented that and turns out that shit works. And I am very happy and also relieved that this could actually work. So you will see there are some nifty little tiny things that we'll have to work around, but the overall idea is here. It fucking works. So right now, for example, on your left is what lives on the ESP32. And on the right is the actual Python API, if I can call it like that. And I have this subset of instructions. This is just a string with two values in it. The left part would be for the top motor. The right part, you understood it, would be for the bottom motor, right? And so these values, they are just not like basic units. These are just the number of steps. 
that we're going to send to the motors. And how it works? Very easy. We just send this string one by one. We write the first string. We just like as to print in the console what we sent. We wait for a new serial response. This response will just be like, hey, I am done with this. Give me the next line. And we just do it all over again until we went out of things to do. This is actually in a while loop so that it just like turns on and on and on and on for test purposes. But you get the idea. And so yeah, on the other side, I'm pretty sure you already understood what was going on, but we just wait for a new serial information. We concatenate that receive string into another one. We separate it in two, thanks to that nifty little function. Did I take it from ChatGPT? Absolutely, I did. We allocate these two different variables to new ones for MT for motor top and MB for motor bottom. You understood that already. We wait for the motor to get in position and we rewrite some information to say like, hey, I am ready for the next line. And there you go. So that's the theory, but does it work? Hello again, this is the first time we see this view. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the actual application of what we just talked about, setting the code line by line to the actual motor and see if it works. So here is the current contraption. Is it messy? Absolutely. But we are not here for this, right? So let me actually give the motor some juice. There you go. So now I have way more resistance. And now what if I send that code I just talked about? Let's start the Python script. There you go. A little bit magical, isn't it? But yeah. I'm, I'm very, very, very fucking happy about that. This is, this is mint. Is it a mess on my desk? Absolutely. But yeah, look at it. Fucking works. Let's go. Oh yeah, don't mind the drill. I actually fucked up some measurements and I needed to widen some holes. So yeah, that works. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Whew. I'm very happy about that. Something that you saw, I'm pretty sure, in this demo is that it is pretty slow to send data line by line, right? Because what's essentially happening is that the card is waiting for an entire string and the string doesn't arrive in one chunk. It arrives like bits by bits. So you have to wait for the entire string and then send it to the actual motors. And if you do that for every line, essentially each instruction has a little bit of delay every time. So what could be a solution to have something that is like smoother to send data to the actual robot. So yeah, potential idea I had in brainstorm with a bunch of co-workers of that problem of delay when you just send line by line. Something you could do, let's say this lives on the PC, boom, and these are the different lines of G-code, and this represents the microcontroller. Instead of send this one by one, make something and return a response, what if you can send an entire chunk, wait for it to do its thing with many different lines, and when it reads, let's say for, for example, the last two lines, it will just go back to the PC and say, hey, I am almost done, just send me the next chunk, and so on and so forth. That could be an idea, this sort of like idea of chunkable data, that could be what's going on. The problem is that I don't don't think we have access to multi-threading on the actual ESP32. I again, like I'm running on pure speculation right now. But yeah, this could be the solution to our problem. And I emphasize greatly on the could be. All right? Don't at me. Don't take my word for granted. But that could be an idea. Next, I did see a YouTube comment. So it was not the last video. It was the one before that when I was talking about the mathematics behind the robot. And I made this cute little joke about memes and stuff like that. And I ended up not telling you about the math part of the project. So this is what we're going to do right now. All right, so the actual math itself, this time instead of being on a fucking Figma and trying to explain what I am saying with a mouse and a keyboard, let's actually do it with a good old Sharpie and paper, right? So let's first draw the actual contraption from the top and from the side. So from the top, we have our two motors, boom, boom, with the end effector, boom, boom. This is one joint and two joints. And from the side, boom, this is the end effector and this is the end effector. So here is what we need. Based off an X and Y position, I would like in the output of that function, two angles, theta one, theta two, and those would be the angles of those two motors. So I thought about it and what would be the easiest solution to be able to have a access to these two things. So first of all, what do we know? We obviously know this, well, where this needs to go, so that would be x, y, and we know the length of these links that would all be the same. And actually, I thought about it a little bit, and we actually need to decompose that into two parts. The first thing you want to do is like based of the distance, let's forget X and Y, but like just the distance of the end effector compared to the motors, we can already get the first part of the angle. And then the rest, this is very easy. Like let's imagine a fake circle right there. What we have to compute is that where on that particular circle based on that radius, where is that? And actually compute the normal or where that is. And that can give us the second part of the equation. So first of all, for the distance, right? Well, what do we have here? This is just a right angle, right? Meaning that this angle right there is the same as this one. And so if we know the distance right there, that would be D, we know that on this right angle, this would just be D divided by two. And so if I rewrite this 
rectangle right there. Boom, boom. If we know this, that is D divided by two, and if we know that J being the length of a joint, well, we have basic ass trigonometry. That means that this angle right there, cos theta equals D divided by two over J. But this is what we want right there, right? So for that, fairly easy. We just put that on the other side. And what is that on the other side? Well, theta is equal to the A cos divided by two over J. And boom, we have a way to have our first part of the equation. So we have something for the distance, but now what about the angle of attack, right? How do we compute this, like this being x, y? Well, again, very basic as trigonometry. Imagining that this point right there is zero, zero. This is something we actually see quite a lot in video game development. And so the basic idea is that this angle right there that we're gonna call theta index two. This is a classic a time two with minus y and x. And this is our second part of the equation, meaning that this angle would be the a cos of d divided by two over j plus the offset of attack that is right there, a ten two minus y and x. I, I am running out of space. But yeah, this is the basic equation. And you just change this sign right there according if you're on the top motor or the bottom one because they're actually like inverted. But this is the basic idea explained to you very, very fast, very, very poorly. <laughs> again, I did not like put this in practice, but I think this is the thing that should work. I am pretty sure someone in the comments like told me that I already fucked up many different signs and this should be there. Like this is not A cos, this is A sine. And it was, I, I, I do. You, 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 get, you get the pretty basic idea. But yeah, essentially to do that, basic ass trigonometry with a bunch of right angles, right triangles, right angle triangles. You got it. All right. I think that's it for this video. Do not hesitate to like, subscribe, follow. Again, it is pretty nice to see people interact with this kind of content. It allows me to be more productive and learn new stuff and show you around that stuff. I really hope you enjoyed it. And so just like at the end of every video, what will be the goal for next week? I would like to print a couple parts related to the actual pen holder, the actual end effector, and also maybe implement the mathematics in the Python API so that instead of just sending the number of steps to the motors, we actually can say in the Python code, give it X and Y coordinates. It actually translates it into motor steps and then sends that to the robot. That would be pretty nice. So yeah, we will see how far that goes. Apart from that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate, interact in the comments, show it to a friend, do whatever, do your stuff. And apart from that, I see you guys later on the internet. Bye-bye everyone.